we've had an air fryer for a long time and it's just been sitting in the basement well there's one <laughs> good grief It is Friday uh, afternoon. The kids are done with school. We've done all our morning chores and whatnot. So I'm gonna get in the kitchen and cook. I don't have my baby right now. He's napping. Usually he naps while we do school, but he's starting to drop his second nap. So anyway, we're on a new schedule and it feels kind of nice. I can actually be in the kitchen right now, um, mostly kid free. So let's see how far we get. Um, I need to serve lunch. I need to start some bagels. That's a big thing uh, that I need to do right now. And I kind of want to make some muffins. I don't know if I'm going to run out of time. It's mostly up to when he wakes up. So we'll see. And then for dinner tonight, we're doing chimichangas, little mini chimichangas in the air fryer. We've had an air fryer for a long time and it's just been sitting in the basement. I need to decide if I'm going to keep it or not. I've been getting rid of a ton of stuff and it kind of needs to prove it's worth this month or I'm going to get rid of it. I do have several air fryer recipes picked out. I was going to do an air fryer video, but it's really hard to collect footage over several days. So I can maybe make a playlist. Um, anytime I make something that's like air fryer or crock pot or whatever, I'll just, I'll start playlists. So you can go back and find those sorted by cooking method. But anyway, let's get to work. All right, this water is about 114 degrees. Let's see, and I need two and a half cups. I will post this recipe below. Um, I'm doubling it in this video. So the one below will make eight bagels and I am making 16 bagels. I need to get this going because I would like to run some errands this afternoon. We need a couple fresh things for dinner. Um, I'm gonna try to make a black bean salad. Oh gosh, was that four? Oh, yikes. I hope that was four. But anyway, the bean salad has some fresh things in it that I need. I need nine teaspoons of sugar. All right, and here I have five cups of all-purpose flour. I have been experimenting with adding this Azure bread flour to my recipes. I put some of it in our sandwich loaf the other day. You can definitely tell it's there, but I don't think it's awful. Um, so I'm gonna try it in these bagels. I'm just gonna do two cups of this. So it's seven cups of flour total. And we need three teaspoons of salt. This is the Redmond Real Salt. The salt is a pretty cool concept if you look it up. It's mined from a seabed in Utah that has theoretically not seen much pollution because it's not a part of the actual ocean. I don't know. So our flour is all ready to go as soon as our yeast is ready. I have a brief moment to kill while that yeast is getting all nice and bubbly. So I'm just gonna make up my kids elderberry shots. We do these every single day for um, vitamins, I guess, <laughs> like for nutrition. I add vitamin D to it and omega every single day. Um, but when they are a little bit under the weather or if they've been exposed, I add zinc. Making your elderberry. This looks good enough for me. All that goodness in there. And no, sweetie, just one elderberry. Oh, I'll give you more of that in a minute. I'm gonna get this started and then my KitchenAid is gonna do the rest. Also a bummer about this KitchenAid. I know I've been talking to some of you in the comments about how you can adjust it down. I have yet to experiment with that. Maybe this weekend I'll get around to it. But also, this is supposed to be a higher capacity KitchenAid. I mean, this is seven cups of flour and it starts to smell like a metallic burn by the time it's done kneading my dough, especially bagel dough. I think this is the biggest dough that I do, seven cups. 
my sandwich bread makes two loaves and it's six cups. So this is probably the most intensive thing I asked my KitchenAid to do. And it is not, it does it, but it's, it's barely up to the task. So I think if I ever buy another mixer, it'll be a Bosch. All right, time to tackle something else. So you know what? I have had this recipe sitting in my recipe folder for a really long time. It's the lemon poppy seed muffins. And I was thinking to myself today, what, why have I not done this? Because all the time I want to make it. And every single time I pull it out and I remember that I don't have lemon zest. Anyway, I've ordered lemons in the next Azure haul and I'm gonna zest them and have them on hand. Okay, so I am gonna mix these up. This is our homemade yogurt and this is one of the top things that we do to save money. Obviously one, one gallon of milk will make four quarts of yogurt. The gallon of milk costs just under $7. And if you go look for a grass-fed organic brand of yogurt, it's, it's like almost the same price for a gallon of milk. So we get four quarts out of our gallon. We go through it. Another thing that, that is so worth it, we have this thing that helps us make yogurt pouches. I don't know if you've seen the Stonyfield organic pouches in the store, but those are so expensive. This is just a case for itself. These are reusable. We sweeten our yogurt with just a little bit of maple syrup. All right, so there is there is a method to my madness. I find that if you seal this pouch before you pour it in, a lot of air gets trapped in there. So what I do is I fill it, and then I seal it. I always drip yogurt everywhere. It's just a part of <laughs> it's a part of this process. And then you can plunge it. Here are my yogurt pouches, all ready to go. Somebody's awake, almost. This has risen up nicely, and we're gonna shape it. So this should make 16 bagels. Sometimes when I make this, I end up with bagels that are smaller, and that's okay because we have little kids and those are the perfect size for them. These do boil, so I've got my water over here. I don't know if you can see it right there. Um, and it is just about ready. My oven is preheating. I am very ready <laughs> to be done with this project. We have some running to do. I posted a poll the other day asking if you all would be interested in more frequent uploads that just had one day of food in them rather than a bunch. And a lot of you said you either didn't mind or you would like that. So I think that's what I'm going to shoot for here. Um, it's just, sometimes it's really hard to gather in, you know, five days of meals, especially if something happens, you know, we have a day where we don't end up cooking because, you know, we have events or, um, sometimes the kids get sick or I get sick, you know, and then, and then before long, it sort of feels really disconnected from you all just because, the video spans so much time and I think I would just rather post single days. I can put them out much faster and stay connected with you guys a little bit better. So this step is probably the most labor intensive part of this. They boil on each side for about a minute. Time to flip. But you can do four at a time. So if you are doing this just a single batch, it should only take you four or five minutes to get this done. It's not that bad. Um, all right, these guys are done. We'll see how we like it with this whole wheat flour in there. They do feel more dense, but I don't think it will ruin the bagel. It just might not be, might not be our favorite way to make these. So we'll see. Oh, another thing I do, I always put them in upside down first. It just makes the whole process easier because then when you pull them out at the end, um, you don't have to worry about flipping the slippery bagels over. You know, you can just pick them up and put them down. While those are finishing, I'm gonna get this prepped for dinner tonight. It's just our taco seasoning and I happen to use it, almost all of it. Last time I cooked, I'm just gonna stir that up. We go through this pretty frequently, so I'm not super concerned about leaving a little bit of old spices in here. Yeah, the, the chimichangas, you cook the beef up with some of the seasoning. I think I'm just gonna do 
a double batch of this. And then you can fill it. Oh, really? Yeah. Lenny's water bottle? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Where was it? It was under this guy's bed. Under our bed. How in the world did that happen? <laughs> we lose this thing all the time. This is all mixed up. I'll link the full uh, spice mix down below. Now this is ready for dinner tonight. One last thing I'll have to worry about. I am back from the store and I have everything for dinner. My game plan is I'm going to make this bean salad dealy and stick that in the fridge and then I'm going to focus on the air fryer. Since it's sort of a new skill, I didn't want to have to think about anything else while I'm doing that because I just, it's a lot to learn still. Um, and then while it's cooking, I'm going to clean my kitchen and hopefully end the evening with a clean kitchen. All right, I'm going to start with some home canned black beans. These are one of my favorite convenience items. It saves so much money and cuts down on so much waste to have your beans in glass jars. Next, I'm going to add a can of corn. Now, the recipe that I'm using, I guess, was inspiration. It called for three cans of black beans, and I just thought that sounded like an awful lot of whatever this is. So I sort of cut the recipe in half for some things, um, but like, I don't really have anything else to use a pepper for, although this is a really large pepper. So maybe I will just use half the pepper? I don't know, we'll see. Once a can of diced green chilies. I'm gonna get these chopped up. My daughter has been super into snacking on raw veggies, which is amazing. So I think I will save the extra. I'll just put half in and maybe she will eat the rest of this for a snack tomorrow. I've heard that the white parts of the pepper are really bitter. I don't know that I've ever noticed, but my dad and I were talking about that the other day. All right, next is the red onion. This I am definitely going to cut in half. So we need cilantro. Our cilantro in our green stock is doing really well now. So I'm excited to start using that here soon. All right, now we're pretty much done chopping. We just gotta add some white wine vinegar and some oil and a couple seasonings. Definitely smells good. It's hard to go wrong with these flavors. Lastly, I need a fourth teaspoon of cumin and chili powder and salt. I thought about mixing all the oil and spices up so that it was more evenly distributed, but um, this will be fine. <laughs> I really want to get the mini chimichangas started sooner rather than later. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, so this recipe starts with chopping an onion. You cook it with the ground beef and then you add your seasonings and then you stuff your chimichangas. So this recipe calls for a full onion, but this is a large onion. And normally that wouldn't stop me. I would still use the whole thing, but this is our last onion until our Azure pickup in a couple weeks. And I can't believe it. We ran out of onions. In one of my hauls, I was talking about how we can never seem to get the right amount of onions. And a bunch of people have suggested chopping and freezing extra, and I agree. I would love to do that. I just have been really busy. So anyway, all that being said, hopefully this and that leftover red onion can tide me over, but I don't know. That's like a week and a half away. We're going to get these going. This is our ground beef from our half cow that we purchased. All right, I drained a lot of the grease out, and now it wants me to add 3 fourths cup of water and an envelope of taco seasoning. I'm not sure how much that is, but we usually do three tablespoons of this to a pound of ground beef. I'm not sure why it wants that water in there. 
I think that's a little bit odd because now we just have to wait for that to cook off. But we'll see. We'll do what they want us to. So the beef is almost done and it's gonna get set aside to cool. Meanwhile, I was getting the other ingredients ready that go inside the chimichanga. And I realized those green chilies were supposed to be in the chimichanga, not in the salad. They're delicious in there, but that was my only can. That's the benefit of buying in bulk is you always have another one, but I don't have that in bulk yet. So I'm gonna do my sour cream, which sometimes we make this from scratch, but I, I had to not this time. So sour cream and it calls for Monterey Jack, but I'm gonna use cheddar. One cup of sour cream, which might actually be this whole container. <laughs> wow, that is. We're just gonna eyeball this cheese. It's really windy out here. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear me. Let's see. I need to preheat this to 375. I think it's doing what it's supposed to. There are so many buttons on this thing. <laughs> It's really confusing. I need to sit down with the owner's manual. I found the cookbook that it came with earlier, but it apparently has no instructions for how to actually work this thing. Okie dokie, that's what's going inside. It is pretty creamy. I hope, I hope it doesn't leak. I have never used this specific brand before, but in addition to Lumpia, it says egg roll wrapper. I guess that's the same thing. Um, so we're gonna give it a go. I decided to keep this wet paper towel over the ones that I'm not using. I got, I bought these and they were frozen and I was a little bummed because last time I had frozen egg roll wrappers. They were messed up, but I figured if the store sold them like this, look how tender these are. Maybe if I just get it started, it won't be so bad. Holy cow, this is really tricky. Oh my gosh. Y'all, is there a trick to this? I don't recall it being so hard. We, I, we have made egg rolls before. I don't know what it is about the grocery stores out here on the East Coast. We just can't seem to find our usual egg roll wrappers. Well, there's one. <laughs> Good grief. Okay, it says to fold the bottom one up, fold the sides in, and then and then egg wash the top flap. Hmm, not the prettiest, but seems sturdy. the tops. I don't have any kind of spray cooking oil so I'm just gonna do this and just rub them. Open, unfortunately, but they're nice and crispy. Here, one. That's pretty good. No, they're really hot, honey. So I'll put one on your plate, okay? One, two, three, extra four, ones five, in here. Seven, eight. I said seven, eight. Seven, eight. Time to plate. Hey, Missy. <laughs> Got hungry kids. You want the red plate? Yeah. Okay. So see, this one came out really tidy. Probably because it was smaller and it got really double wrapped. Hear how crunchy it is? But then, this one is super soft. So, 
Probably delicious, but not the most sturdy. We need to find the better wrappers. So there's the kids' dinner. And here is the adult plate. Thank you all so much for hanging out today, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.